actually today. Looking forward to hearing this. So today we welcome onto the programme Brighton born and bred Tony Parsons, who's a Peace Haven artist now. Uh, really interesting career. He used to do caricatures, um, three minute black and white sketches, round tables for weddings and corporate functions. We'll see where his career took him after that in just a moment. But as part of the, doing these commissions, he sketched pilots and crew, got a ride in a Sea King, and pilot for the day was Prince William. So some impressive goings on here. Let's hear Tony's story. Tony Parsons joins me on the programme. Lovely to have you with us, Tony. Hello, Sarah. <laughs> I I, first of all, I imagine um, it's it's quite a delicate balancing act, isn't it? Doing caricatures around a table at weddings because you've got to be careful that people approve of how you've placed them in a caricature environment. Oh, God, yes. It's a, a, a high wire act. Um, it's a very careful gauging of quite how drunk people are. And, uh, <laughs> what, I'd what imagine you think some people. Take? <laughs> yeah, some people were very amused. Maybe others sort of look at them thinking, well, I surely not. That's not me. Yeah, the bride always had to come out looking nice. I think that was a, <laughs> a kind of staple rule, really. Such fun, though, as well, going to these weddings and doing that, I would imagine. Yeah, it, it was enormous fun. It was a really interesting, varied career. Um, I absolutely loved the the sort of travelling, meeting people. Um, I mean, you know, like any job, there's a downside. Sort of endless Christmas gigs. I could do fifty corporate gigs and then run up to Christmas, and you get to the point where I think, if I hear Slade once more, I'm going to throw up. But um, mostly, you're you're sort of meeting people at the a happy point in their lives, and you're you're making everyone laugh. So everyone's pleased to see you. Enormous fun. Sounds wonderful. And actually, um, tell us about then the time when it was just one of those, probably one of the mill commissions that had done things like this before, meeting the pilots, the crew, going a seeking. You don't really expect Prince William to be the person who's your pilot. <laughs> it was um, it was to commemorate the last of the sea kings. So the RAF were running rescue helicopters, which um, the, the sort of old fashioned bright yellow ones. The, the last place they were running them was uh, Cornwall and uh, Top of Anglesey. And um, a lady from the RAF phoned up and said, we'd like one of your um, large sprawling commissions um, featuring the portraits, the caricature portraits of all the, the cast and crew that run this rescue helicopter out of the Irish Sea. Um, would you come and sort of sketch everybody and photograph everybody? And um, I was uh, a lifeboatman at the time, so I sort of had dispensation to go on the helicopter as, if I fancied it, which of course I did. Uh, so I, I went out for the day and took photographs and uh, sketches and they said uh, they zipped me into a green jumpsuit and said this is your pilot for the day captain wales <laughs> and uh, yeah i spent the day with him it was enormous fun um i watched That's... a jerry carl show with him that um, is really and... <laughs> was it, was, did you feel a bit intimidated though when you know the future king of england is your <clears throat> is your pilot for the day or did you just sort of chat did you get beyond that and then just start chatting well, I, I'd drawn his caricature and Kate for the, the royal wedding. I, I produced a kind of uh, caricature tea towel. And there was half a million of them made. <laughs> and I know he had one because I saw him on the BBC drying up with it. Um, and then a couple of years later, I'm hanging out the bottom of his helicopter, banging it against the side of an Estonian tanker, thinking, did he like it? <laughs> and I'll find out now. <laughs> but yeah, he was... He was he was um, incredibly polite and, it, yeah, all the things you hear about royals, I suppose, he, he was absolutely charming, lovely. Yeah, and a skilled pilot as well. It did, it did a good job for you on that day. So, so obviously, this was uh, you know, a big part of your life, 15 years, and also a big part of your life, the, a lifeboat crew member, which you joined at just 17. I mean, that's a huge responsibility at such a young age. Yeah, I, I started as crew. I came in as a trainee, like everyone else, and did a couple of years of sort of basic training and got given a pager. Um, and I just carried on. I, I mean, I sort of worked at me all over the place, but whenever I came back, they had a pager warm for me. And uh, I stayed on the crew. Um, I qualified as a skipper, and I did a command search and rescue course. And, um, yeah, for the last seven years, I was um, one of the skippers on the inshore lifeboat at Brighton. Um, and I sort of stepped down in 2019, uh, just before all the COVID nonsense. And um, I yeah, had a third child and had to move out of the area and get a bigger house. Um, and sadly, yeah, I had to step down from the lifeboat. Lots of my friends are still doing it. And 
And do you miss? You must really miss it when you when you step down really, after really it's been such part crew. of your life. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a second family. I, I really do miss my crew. Um, it, it was, you know, it, it's a very intense family-like relationship with the, the rest of the lifeboat crew. You, you end up more or less in each other's pockets. You have to know where everybody is and what they're all doing in order that you can pull a crew together at a moment's notice. And actually, you know, you must be facing, you never know what call you're going to get or what situations you're going to be facing, though. There must be moments that feel quite scary. Um, yeah, I, I, it was always the most dangerous thing is driving down there. <laughs> um, you're always in a bit of a hurry and you don't know what you're going to get to. By the time you get on the boat, um, everything's drilled and practised and you know, obviously it can be quite rough weather. An awful lot of lifeboat shouts don't involve rough weather, but uh, yeah, it's kind of problem solving at sea. And it was enormous fun. I mean, you, you've got to remember all the lifeboat crew want to do it. If you're not going to pay them, then they've got to turn up for some other reason. And uh, it, it's got to be enormous fun. I, I think that, that, that was the key thing really, is that everybody is engaged and, you know, <laughs> got, got their best game head on. Yeah, uh, so I can hear the sound of the ocean behind you. you. Can hear the seagulls, and so your passion is still there. Boats, sea, the coast. Tell us more about where you moved to and where that took you. Um, well, I've, I've sort of always bounced around. I started in Wooding Dean. I've ended up in Peacehaven, but uh, um, I played with boats. I ended up. I worked in Greece for a year as a um, yacht engineer, and then I started delivering boats around the world. Um, sailing across the Indian Ocean and things, but I've always been mad keen on boats. Um, I've got one now. I've got a, a little fast fishing boat, which I sort of take out to the cliffs to take photos of cliffs and lighthouses, which feature prominently in my work. Um, but when I decided to sort of stop the long hours and very, very late evenings with a young family as a caricaturist, um, I looked first at portrait painting as a sort of logical progression, but it wasn't a terribly healthy industry that I found. I think you have to be sir someone and um, kind of know all your clients. Um, then I looked at landscape painting. And I thought, well, I like painting sea and boats. And it's quite an exciting place to be as an industry. It's, it's growing. The Americans are leading the plein air revolution, which is painting outside. So I've, I've got very into that. I write for a couple of magazines about um, painting outdoors. So you take a fold-up easel and... Uh, plenty of warm clothing and uh, go out to uh, battle with the elements. Um, so, yeah, I, I, half the time I paint outside if I can. And your work, I mean, I've got some of your work here in front of me and it's absolutely, you know, stunning, stunning oh, paintings. <laughs> and, and that's been recognised, hasn't it? Because people, you've got your work displayed in 12 galleries. You've got your own gallery in Wooding Dean. So things aren't going badly, really. No, it's been great. Um, it's been really exciting. Fortunately, uh, there's, there's a, a number of people who are sort of collecting my work, so they come back and buy more, which is lovely. Um, and you kind of develop a relationship with your um, your collectors, um, which that, that, that's even more exciting because you get to know what they like as well. Um, I, and I, I, I just run around sort of painting whatever grabs me and then I hang it on a wall and if someone likes it, they buy it. So less commissions it's more about what tickles me um and i can sort of i can tell <laughs> is that difficult though you know That's you, you I, want to paint today. I was reading that because you're obviously you know it, it, uh, as you say it's got to be something you really want to do but does that lead to some awkward moments if someone asks you to do something you think no no not 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 particularly no thank you i i do take commissions but i make it absolutely clear that um it's got to be something i want to paint so I've gone on the days where I'm plonked in someone's back garden and asked to paint the garage. Um, but, you know, if, if somebody wants a, a seascape that's got a lighthouse or a swimmer in it, that's something I'm going to paint anyway. I'm more than happy to sort of work with them to get something that I can I can definitely do. Um, but most of the time I'm painting what I feel like. I, I've got photographs. If it's an absolutely horrible day, I'll camp in the studio with photographs and a wood burner going. And that's when I paint some of the larger pieces um, or somewhere I can't get to now. And then if the sun comes out, I'll set the easel up wherever I can. I'm, yesterday I was on a bridge in London painting the Thames and um, blocking the walkway um, because it's absolutely glorious sunlight. But it was chilly. 
And in terms of, um, you know, the, the, what was really lovely is that this has been, I would imagine, during the pandemic, when the world has, has sort of closed to everybody, just being able to bring these wonderful paintings has been something that people have really enjoyed. It was really life-affirming as a painter, because you're never really sure if you're useful to humanity or not. Um, to suddenly, everyone was trapped indoors, the, the first lockdown. And it took about a week, and then it went completely crazy. Everyone sitting there on their phones and websites, Instagram, Facebook, and begging for paintings of nice sunny things and summer and things to remind them of the seaside. And um, I went from my general plodding painting existence to suddenly there's people demanding four or five paintings a night. Um, I got very friendly with the lady in the post office, all masked up, and there was just hundreds of parcels of paintings going out. And that sort of really set light to my um, my large commissions and painting in the gallery and things. And yeah, it, it, it's grown really rapidly. I, sp I suppose I've had a good pandemic in that way. And, and I love the idea of sort of recording lessons and, and teaching people art during the pandemic. I mean, how did that take, take off? That's quite a tricky, it's a tricky skill to, to pass on, isn't it? Because I always think you can either do it or you can't. Uh, I got quite used to sort of doing lessons and live demonstrations. So before the pandemic, I was doing, um, I'd go to an art society pretty much every week and um, I'd do a, a live chat and I'd paint a, 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 a landscape in front of them and I, there was a little bit of my old caricature career there's a, an element of working with an audience I really enjoyed it um, so I do workshops and lessons and then obviously everyone's locked in their house and I, I felt the need to talk to people and zoom was wonderful um, so yeah we'd have people crowded around their kitchen tables with the paints out whole families on some occasions and uh, we do the same thing. We we paint a landscape or a seascape, or uh, we we did portraits and people and all the tricky things that sort of new artists struggle with. So hands, faces, whatever, and we try and make it as entertaining as possible for an hour long lesson. Sometimes a little bit longer. Um, do you? It's such a. You know, it's. I'm I'm intrigued by the fact that you've been a caricaturist and now you're doing this to such <laughs> very diverse and different skills. Yeah, it's, the, the two disciplines don't often meet. Um, I think the working with people bit, um, that, that, that's definitely a good crossover, and I love the entertainment angle. But when I'm outdoors painting, so certainly around Brighton on the beaches and the, the seafronts up at Eastbourne, up on the cliff tops, loads of people come to talk to you. Um, and if you're willing to sort of talk back... <laughs> Um, then, then quite often I'll invite people that come to chat to me to sort of go and stand in the middle distance and appear in the paintings. Um, there's, there's a lot of kids. It's always the kids that come and talk to you first and you sort of have a chat with them and the parents and do you fancy a go and you ha hand a baffled child a brush and they can do clouds and a bit of sky or something. Um, that's generally quite popular and sometimes dad buys the painting, um, which, you know, doesn't <laughs> doesn't hurt. <laughs> so, and, and what's what next then? So you've got and you're sort of I would imagine that this this is your your you know your main focus now. This is your your job, your employment, is it? Yeah, yeah, this is me. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm allowed to do this for a living. Because that's you um, know people to to actually be able to say I'm an artist. A, a lot of people don't have that luxury because they have to do all sorts of other things in order to make a living alongside it. I have a constant running battle with my dad, who still thinks I should be an engineer and work with spanners and a hammer. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> you've got to have validation to be a useful person that can mend a system. Well, I was a hopeless engineer. Um, yeah, I, I fight with it every day. I've got friends that went to art college and, you know, they're, they're absolutely solid in their bones. They are an artist and I do wrestle with that. Um, but I'm out there in the sunshine painting pictures which is exactly what I want to be doing and then people come and see them and collect them that, that's absolutely lovely um I've got a, a studio up in Wooding Dean and um there's a sort of garage attached to it that we had builders white wall it and we've turned it into a sort of miniature gallery and then I have like open days once every couple of months open studios 
everyone comes up for a bit of bubbly or whatever and uh, comes and looks at paintings. Sounds a perfect combination, lovely paintings and a bit of bubbly. So how do people find yeah. out more about your work? Uh, it's all through the website, uh, artistonthehill.co.uk. Um, on the front page at the moment is um, a, a little advert with uh, all the details for the next open studio, which is the evening of the 10th of December and the morning of the 11th of December. So there might even be warm mince pies and probably some old wine. But yeah, artistonthehill.co.uk. And there's all my paintings for sale and all the things I'm doing. Sign up for the newsletter and I promise it's not too boring and it's fairly irregular. Well, if anyone's looking for a perfect and rather, un, you know, a lovely special Christmas present for oh, anyone, yeah. what could be better? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And what a great way to do your Christmas shopping as well, bubbly and a, and a mince pie as well, alongside looking at some great paintings. Well, really love your work. Beautiful, beautiful paintings. And it's been a real pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. To, and how's life with three children as well, by the way? Uh, life's insanely hectic. They all have birthdays at this end of the year. So, uh, yeah, we, we, we get three weeks of solid mayhem. <laughs> um, and then it all settles down again. But the, the youngest is three. And... Uh, Yes, we gave him a drum kit for his birthday. Oh, that, that was a bad, bad move. No. That was a major rookie error. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tony, real pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining us on the programme. Tony Parsons, artist, beautiful pictures. Been looking at them here. They're displayed in 12 galleries.